In today's video, we're going to talk about the notorious Kurdish criminal who's currently serving a life sentence in the Netherlands. He is Hussein Bebassin, commonly referred to as Europe's Pablo Escobar. Without further delay, let's get started. Beginning of the Bebassin's career. Hussein Bebassin was born on 25th of December 1956 in Lys, Turkey. He drifted into the crime business early and was first arrested in 1976 because police found 11 kilos or 24 pounds of hashish in his house during a raid. He received a two-year prison sentence for his crime. Afterwards, in 1984, he was arrested in the United Kingdom for possession of a fake passport and trafficking heroin and was sentenced to 12 years. Nevertheless, he was released after four years to serve the rest of his sentence in Turkey. After only four months of imprisonment in Turkey, he was released in 1989. Due to his premature release, many people raised questions about the potential corruption of the Turkish government and the court. For him, this was just the beginning, and he didn't intend to step out of the criminal milieu. Only four days after he was released from prison, he was arrested in the city of Silivri, near Istanbul, for unauthorized possession of a gun and narcotics. Although he somehow managed to fly abroad, the Dutch police eventually caught him and made him serve his sentence. Despite the slow and unlucky start, since he was arrested multiple times and spent many years in prison, Bebassin was persistent and didn't intend to quit. By the year 1998, the Bebassin family was making millions from exporting heroin to Europe. Hussein picked the Dutch metropolis Amsterdam as a base for his drug trafficking business, while his older brother, Abdullah Bebassin, who was also a drug lord, chose North London after moving to the United Kingdom. Hussein's strange personality and relationship with the media. Hussein Bebassin was open about his criminal activities, especially regarding his involvement in the opium trade from Afghanistan. He controlled the flow of opium through his family's lands in southeastern Turkey, turning it into heroin for the western markets. The Bebassin family, based in a less developed part of Turkey, had a large and feared presence, with many male members having criminal records. When talking to criminologists, Hussein openly discussed his criminal operations and influence over the opium trade. He also shared his connections to both the Turkish ruling classes and the Kurdish Workers' Party, the PKK, presenting himself as a violent gangster willing to order killings to protect his reputation and honor. He even mentioned carrying a gun and using a diplomatic passport during his travels. How did Hussein Bebassin earn himself a life sentence? On March 27, 1998, Bebassin was arrested along with his nephew, Giasetin Bebassin, in a little village in the province of North Brabant in the south of the Netherlands called Leishout. The two criminals were arrested in a joint operation by British, Italian, Belgian, German and Dutch police. At first, Hussein was sent to serve in an ordinary detention facility in Rotterdam, but in June it was decided to put him in the maximum security facility in Voet. In addition, his detention in this facility was extended multiple times. On February 10, 2001, Hussein and Giasetin were both found guilty on multiple charges, including charges of conspiracy to murder, kidnapping and drug smuggling. He pleaded not guilty to all of the charges, but later admitted the drug trafficking under the excuse that the Turkish government forced him to do it. A Dutch professor emeritus, Tom Dirksen, came into possession of the telephone recordings that were used as crucial evidence against the convicts and stated that the recordings were manipulated. At first, Hussein was sentenced to 20 years in prison, but that decision was later altered to a life sentence. Meanwhile, his nephew, Giasetin, was sentenced to 11 years. Hussein's brother, Abdullah, was also imprisoned on drug trafficking and blackmail charges. During that time, a special court in Istanbul, known as the State Security Court, or DGM, held a trial for 21 Turkish individuals. Some of them, like Hussein and Giasetin Bebasin, 
were not present as they were in prison in the Netherlands. Another individual, Nisa Metin Bebasin, was convicted and is serving a 15-year sentence in Germany. They were all accused of forming a criminal group and trafficking illegal drugs. The court found that they should be arrested on these charges. Bebasin stay in prison. Bebasin was sent to another prison with some kind of a different regime back on 24th of December 2003. From that point, his mental health started getting worse every day. One psychiatric report from 2004 even found that Hussein had developed various mental disorders, such as chronic post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, and a rare condition called somatization. He started experiencing and communicating psychological distress as bodily and organic symptoms, and he started continuously seeking medical help for them. Besides that, Baybassin is believed to have retained most of his fortune, which he invested in tourism, mostly on the Mediterranean and Aegean coasts. According to the National Criminal Intelligence Service in London, Turkish and Kurdish gangs are responsible for importing up to 90% of Britain's heroin worth millions of dollars a year. A substantial amount of it allegedly belongs to Hussein and his family. Many sources believe that although Hussein Babassin is currently serving a life sentence, he's extremely powerful and influential outside the prison. Not only that, but some people even say he controls a vast European heroin empire. While he's absent, his relatives run that empire immaculately. The Strategy Bebasin's associates force or trick young men in the Turkish and Kurdish communities in London to work for them, and then provide guns and money supplied directly by the Bebasin family. Narcotics are usually trafficked in white vans because local kingpins prefer that to street-level dealing. These gangs also force businesses to pay protection money. Besides criminal activities in Britain, the Bebasin family influence is also present in Turkey, Germany, Netherlands, Italy, and Spain. Interpol has opened files on at least 12 other Bebasin family members and dozens of their associates. The most important question about Bebasin and his associates is how they all managed to settle in Britain during the 90s. One of the most important factors that supposedly contributed to that is their low profile. They're even considered very good neighbors and no one would ever expect them to be drug lords because they look like they live normal lives. Besides keeping a low profile, possession of firearms is probably the most important thing if you want to be successful in this business. Possession of guns immediately put them in a better position and made them more powerful and influential. Additionally, all members of the gang have various intriguing information about politicians, police officers, and intelligence officials that they can use to expose them should they want to. But most frequently, they use this information to get themselves out of trouble and manipulate other people. Hussein Bebasin was once even recruited as an informer, so he'd been a precious asset to customs at that time. Also, even if he hadn't been recruited, then he would probably have had access to much interesting information due to his position in the criminal milieu. Developing good contacts is very important in every business, and things are no different when it comes to criminal activities. Bebasin and his family eventually created strong bonds with politicians, police, and other influential figures as well. Hussein Bebasin stated in a few of his interviews that he'd received help from Turkish embassies and consulates to finish his drug-related work, while the Turkish army officers serving with NATO in Belgium were also involved. On the other hand, the government decided not to be in the gang's way, so it turned a blind eye. Hussein showed up many times randomly talking live on TV about his wrongdoings and his relations with the government and other officials. Some sources claim that he intended to show the public that he possesses sensitive information and that he could expose everyone if needed in order to bring them down with him. He blackmailed many people that way and managed to evade imprisonment multiple times until he was officially imprisoned for life in 2002. Kuzmetim 1 Incident 
In late 1992, the Turkish police caught a big ship called MV Kizmetim 1 in the Mediterranean Sea. They suspected it was carrying a huge amount, around 28,900 pounds or 13,100 kilos, of a valuable substance called morphine base worth millions of dollars. The people on the ship sank it on purpose during the police action. Allegedly, the drugs were owned by a group of people connected to the ship's owner, Osman Ayanoglu, and his associates, including Seymour Das and Hussein Bey Basin. Well, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and comment on this video. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you like what we're doing and want us to continue with more cool content. Until the next time.